All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you engaged in last week's challenge and connected with your kid and spent some individual time with them and set your dang phone down. If you didn't go ahead and hit pause on this podcast and go find your kid and do something, man. <laughs> so with that said, welcome Brad and Britt. So we've got uh, Brad Williams and Britt Lee. They're here from uh, Pure Athlete. They've got a fantastic podcast. Uh, I said a quick prayer before guys, there's two pure athletes out there. There's a, a knockoff brand. <laughs> so <laughs> imitations flattery. So, uh, you know, God bless you guys as you navigate through that. So I warn the audience when you go check out, uh, Brad and Britt, uh, check out the real version. Uh, it's way better than the other version. So <laughs> guys, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks so much. We appreciate, appreciate you having us. Yeah. Don't check out the purple version. Yeah. Yeah. Try, try the blue version. <laughs> I, I made a mistake, guys. I listened to both versions and I'm like, I am so confused. This one is so good. And this other one just uh, hasn't figured out how to how to do this podcasting thing like the first one that I listened to. But I thought it was the same brand. So uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so with that, uh, you guys got a, a great book that's out there. You got a great mission. Uh, you're partners with uh, Jeff Francoeur. For those of you guys who don't know, Jeff's been a major league baseball player for 12 years and uh, all the kind of core values and characteristics that you guys have. I'm like, dude, those are all words that I would use to describe Jeff Francoeur from just watching him play. I don't know Jeff at all, but from being an observer, like, dang it, man, I don't like playing against that guy. That guy never quits. <laughs> he's a, he's a very, very good guy, very humble for all that he's accomplished. Just, um, great, great to be a partner with him. Yep. Yep. If you know, if you know, Jeff is a, from TV on, he broadcast on TBS. If you hear him on TV, that's exactly who he is. Uh, he's the, he's the real deal. So yeah, Britt, if you want to tell us just a little bit about your, uh, your background and why you're doing what you're doing now, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to, love to. Thanks. Uh, yeah, my background um, is I've got uh, four kids. Uh, my kids are all grown now. I've got I've got two daughters who both got married this year, so I'm I'm happy about that, but recovering from that as well. Uh, and then I've got two sons who are twins, and they are at the University of Georgia right now, and they're studying sports marketing. Um, you know, I have a background in, in corporate marketing, uh, worked for a, a big corporate company for about 20 plus years and then left and started my own deal and, um, have owned my own business for about 17 years and, and in the marketing area, but mostly in the event space, uh, running conferences and producing video storytelling, uh, all those types of things. Um, uh, you know, that's, uh. I'm here. We're here. Both Brad and I are here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, you know, big, big, uh, big, not unfortunately for us. I'm not a University of Georgia guy, even though my kids have gone there. I'm a Georgia Tech guy, <laughs> a long suffering Georgia Tech guy. And um, anyway, we'll get into some of the other stuff uh, from there. But that's 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 the base. Excellent. Excellent. And how about you, Brad? I. Uh... I've got six kids. I've uh, been married for, I guess, 32 years now. I've got age 26 down to 12. So all phases of life, uh, two boys, four girls. And um, I was in the sports marketing space for about 20 years, worked for a big firm, started my own company. Uh, and then when I got out of that space, God led me to uh, Christian education. So I have been the, the athletic director at Providence Christian for the past nine years and now I'm the associate head of school, which is crazy. And then, uh, you know, now Britt and I have been doing this endeavor for, been talking about it for a long time, but officially, you know, I launched it about a year and a half ago. That's great. Yeah. I love your guys' website and love what you're about. Uh, the, yeah. the topic came in and, you know, sports, parenting, Christian, uh, I'm like, yeah, I bring these guys on, like, let's go. <laughs> so there's so many, uh, in, in my world, I'm like, I love, as a kid, love sports because you learn so many lessons through sports. And then as a parent, being more on that guide, you know, deal. Um, things happen in sports, on the field, off the field. 
uh, parents' involvement, coaches, other teams, uh, the organizations and tournaments and all that stuff. And like a lot of unpredictable things happen and emotions and um, sometimes things get said that people would like to take back. And nowadays you've got them in print where you can, no, you actually did say this, like you typed it <laughs> from your device. So like when you hear all that, what are some quick thoughts that, that jump out to you guys? I mean, for, for me, I would say, you know, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, and the reason we're in this is, um, is because sports, youth sports offer just incredible opportunities uh, to teach your kids about life. I mean, just almost everything they're going to experience in life, they have a chance to experience in youth sports. And as parents, you know, we can either, we can either passively go by the youth sports journey and, uh, and hope they get some things or we can approach it with intentionality. And, um, and so we believe and in, in my, my journey with my kids is over in, in youth sports, but, um, and, and, you know, and I really, really ended up that just so impressed that, you know, that we want to help parents, you know, understand and how to approach this, this journey with intentionality and seize those opportunities rather than miss those opportunities. Um, and, you know, I'll say that, you know, every parent out there, none of us are perfect. We're all, we're all striving to be the best parent we can and uh, and we're going to do some things right, and we're going to we're going to mess up uh, in all facets of life. But that's going to be true in sports as well. And uh, but you know, but approaching it with intentionality really helps you uh, to to enhance that experience and and end up on the back end of it, hopefully with a better relationship with your kids instead of a worse one. And then in your family, one of your children turned into a Division One athlete. Yeah, I did two, two, my two girls played sports, uh, but just on a recreational level, which is great. They, they played a number of things and, and loved it. They also did theater and that was a passion uh, in music. My two boys were all in on sports, played everything. And, and, um, and then tennis became uh, kind of their passion where they wanted to play college tennis. And that became a goal at like 11 years old. Uh, they ended up in high school, quitting everything else and just focusing on tennis. One of them, one of them, uh, decided as a senior that he wasn't going to end up playing at a, a power five type of school. And he wanted to, he wanted that college experience. So he, he laid up his racket at that point. My other one ended up playing, uh, one year at a division one school he had surgery on both knees. Oh. And said, that's, that's <laughs> enough for me. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. I, I asked that question that way so that the audience goes, you know, my two-year-old is going to yeah. be a future NFL player or yeah. whatever. And yeah. the, you know, the rec plus and the rec and the select, like there's a whole lot of what oh, should I do, you know? So we'll, we'll get into, we'll get into that yeah. as well. Um, and then Brad, you've got a ton of experience in this area. <laughs> throw a little yeah it just I would say you know from a parent standpoint I've got uh my four girls were, were all involved in, in in theater and then my two boys were involved in athletics so we got really both of the crazy environments in our family but um you know my oldest son always just really took was you know loved sports but didn't take it too seriously played soccer and ran track in high school my second son Kind of like Brits uh, boys um, had a goal to, to to play baseball in college. He's a senior right now, and gosh, it's just been a roller coaster journey. And he's still got to make some decisions here going into senior year whether he wants to to pursue that or not. He's got some opportunities, but um, you know, just just kind of going through that whole experience, you realize that um, you know only three percent of of athletes in high school are ever going to play college. And so as a parent, just recognizing that and being aware of that and, and really just trying to make, like Britt said, trying to make this journey uh, about a lot more than just that end goal, you know, uh, and, and be aware of what your kid's passions are. Be aware if your kid uh, actually loves that sport or they're doing it just for fun um, and then, you know, helping them and guide them and, and, and use it as an opportunity to get closer to your kid and not an opportunity to, to hurt that relationship because it is a very emotional journey. It really is. 
in a good and a bad way. Can you talk a little bit more about um, what parents should, like how their thought filters should work as they're going into this guiding process? I think the first, the, the thing that I would say is just to be aware uh, of your child, yeah, be aware of uh, of their passion. Are they really, really passionate about soccer? Are there, you know, if, if the, you, you have to watch them and, and even really watch them more than listen to them, because, um, you know, it's, it's great that, that they, they love sports, but, um, a lot of times it becomes the parents, um, desire or the parents passion or dream more so than the child. And so that first thing I would say is along the whole journey and every season in life, uh, in that, in their sport, just be aware of, are they really, you know, you know, if, like I always say, if you're my oldest son, the reason I realized he, he was a really good soccer player and um, and I've just, you know, had so much ability, but I never saw him really practicing soccer a lot outside of the structure practices or the games. And he played hard and he worked hard, had a great attitude, but I never saw him really, really work on soccer, you know, by himself. And so I just actually just approached him and finally just said, look, we're traveling a lot and going spending a lot of money and going a lot of different uh, tournaments. Do you really is this something you really love? And he just, he was, you know, thankfully he was very honest with me and just said, dad, I, I, you know, I don't love it. It's something that I do, but it's, it's not something that, that really is, is my biggest passion. And that helped us reset, you know, that, that whole journey. And it's like, okay, man, just, you know, have, have a blast. You know, I want you to, to still work hard and be a great teammate and whatever, you know, but where this ends, that's great. And let's, you know, we'll, I'd love you to have, you know, let's look at what are, what are your other passions in life and how do I, how do I help you with that? But I would just say the first thing, just being aware of, of your child. It, it, are they really, really as excited about this sport as you are, you know, and, and just kind of really watch that. Yeah. I think that's a, a fantastic, uh, be aware anywhere. So sports, your kids, uh, your wife, like, <laughs> and, and learn what they're thinking, what makes them tick, like really be in tune and, uh, you know, inside your own house, like that's a pretty big thing. My, uh, younger daughter recently said to me, and I'm the head coach of the team softball. And she says, Hey dad, I'm really sorry. Mm. And I said, okay, about what, <laughs> where's this going? And she says, I really, really like softball. I said, okay. She says, however, soccer is my thing. Like I love soccer. I'm like, well, I know that I see you around the house. Like you're practicing soccer on your own every day she was and this volleyball thing like i think i'm really going to be into that and so i just want to let you know like softball's after that i said okay she said i said why uh why'd you apologize well you know like you love softball and you're really you're the coach and so i just want to let you know but i'm sorry that softball is not my number one i said sweetie i love soccer i love volleyball i love Girl Scouts, like whatever it is you love, like I'm into. Yeah. And she's like, so it's okay that softball is not my number one. I said, I don't know what gave you the impression that it had to be your number one. Yeah. Yeah. Where her older sister's number one softball. Yeah. And that team's highly competitive and, but her team's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, Every, every kid is different, Dan, you know, Jet Francoeur on our show, you know, 12 year MLB player and his son who, who's a, a 10, I think he's 10 and, uh, and his son is, is his passion right now is lacrosse and more than baseball. And, and Jeff is like in internally, he's like, Oh, you know, I wanted to be baseball, but, but he's wise enough to say it's about my son's passion, not my passion. And one of the one of the things that we've kind of learned and or that's kind of come forth as we've been doing this for a while, uh, you know, there's if your passion as a parent for a sport significantly exceeds your kid's passion for a sport, it's not going to end well. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we really need to now kids kids passion ebbs and flows. So, you know, if they get tired of something for a, for a time, take a break doesn't mean that they're giving up on it forever. But, uh, but over time, if your kid doesn't have a passion for a sport and you're driving them into that sport, it's not going to end well. I had a few questions around that because listeners have said, and they're all kind of in that same basket right now. So I, I might rapid fire them or whatever, yeah. but so the kid who 
uh, enjoys a sport, likes a sport, professes it's their number one sport, whatever. However, they're not practicing outside of practice. Mm -hmm. So uh, practices, maybe the private coach, but there's no other level of any outside activities on their own. Everything is on the calendar with people. Yeah. Um, and the dad says, how do I change that? Like, they're going to fall behind. How do I change that? Uh, I'm like, I got my answer, but what are, what are your thoughts around that? Brad, well, you want to go first? Yeah, I think, I think there, it, that is probably one of the biggest fallacies of youth sports is your child is not going to fall behind. Um, I think somebody, I forget one of our guests talked about, um, one of our experts talked about it, what, uh, free play. And I think free play is such an important part of, of kids life. And I think that will, the, the key to this thing is you want your kid to keep playing the next year. And I think free play is, is an opportunity. The kids love to be competitive. Kids love to win. They love to keep score. They love to ref their own games. It's kind of when the parents get involved at an early age that when it becomes so structured that it's where, where it kind of makes it uh, more like a business. And so, um, you know, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Your kid is, you know, they, as they get older, they're going to have to take their sport more serious and they're going to, you know, to make their high school team, they're going to have to make a commitment to that. Um, but if they're nine and 10 and 11 and, you know, they, it's, you know, it's more about just loving that sport. How do you keep them? If they love that sport, they're going to work hard eventually. You know, yes, you probably need to get them some kind of training just so they can learn how to swing a bat the right way or or serve a, a tennis ball the right way. But it's more about, man, them just getting out there and playing with their friends. And if you let them do that a lot, they're going to love they're going to love that sport. And um, and I just think there's the, the falling behind thing. You know, that that's I would listen to you know, the mistakes I've made was listening to folks who are going through the journey with me, not folks who have been through the journey already. And those are the folks, the mentors and the people are the, are the ones who've been through it already and who are wiser than us. And so people that tell you, hey, if you don't get on this certain team, if you're not training this much, you know, don't don't take that vacation because you're going to miss out on this. That's just wrong. Your kid's not going to fall behind, you know, especially before puberty. I mean, it all changes after that anyway. <laughs> so I, I love that. That's a great point of uh, reaching out to guys that have already been on the journey. Mm -hmm. And have some results and have some, you know, look back time period to process decisions they made, things they've experienced. There's a, a particular guy I know, and he's got four kids that are phenomenal, you know, grown adults, and they all had their own sports journeys and competitive. And I, oh man, you got five minutes today. Yeah. What do you got? <laughs> and I'm like, here's the new scenario that just like it's crazy <laughs> and I need some perspective and help me look. 20 years from now. And, but right now I want to punch somebody out is what I want to do. <laughs> We've all been there. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, by getting the, getting the advice from somebody that's been there before brings a whole different perspective to it. Um, I love what you're talking about earlier, Britt, which was uh, the relationship with your kids. Like at the core of it, who's going to be there 20 years from now? Yeah. yeah. Your kid, not the youth sport. That's right. That's right. Uh, look, uh, we, again, we, the sports culture today is so different than it was when I was a kid, but even the way it was 15 years ago, I mean, it is just spiraling uh, in a, in a direction of all of us at parents wrestle with that question you just posed. Oh no. You know, my, my nine-year-old is is only playing 20 baseball games, you know, in a season. And these other kids are playing a hundred games in a season. You know, I, I've got to get him on that train or the train's going to leave us. We we all wrestle with that. Uh, and and there is a reality to that at some age. I think our big message is it's not at nine. <laughs> I mean, if it's if you're in gymnastics, it might be. So let's be real. There are some sports that are very younger age driven, but the majority of sports, you know, as Brad said, puberty changes everything. We talked to so many pro athletes, Dan, that, you know, that it wasn't until after puberty that they blossomed. 
Yes. And, you um, had somebody on one of your guests. I forget which one, but uh, a big time player. And he said, you know, I wasn't really anything when I was a eighth grader. Yeah. And they didn't want me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a number of people like that. Carson Wentz said that. I was going to say, I think it was Carson Wentz actually. Yeah. Yeah. I was l- listening to that one and Carson's awesome. I mean, we have people, Austin Eckler, who's a stud running back in for the Chargers right now. You know, he he not only did he not get drafted in the NFL, he didn't get he didn't get looked at, he didn't get recruited in college. He, you know, went to a little small high school. He was a little guy, you know, but as he but his work ethic, you know, as he got older carried him. Mm-hmm. Um so there, there's so many stories of of folks like that that we've learned. And gosh, I, you know, I have I have a chapter in my book called "What If They're Not Working Hard Enough." And the reason I have that chapter in there is because I wrestled with that question a lot. And my kids were really passionate about wanting to play college tennis, but the the passion translating to the work ethic and what we call grit uh as one of the pillars of a pure athlete sometimes didn't translate it ebbed and flowed and uh and it frustrated me as a parent who was spending a lot of time and a lot of money uh trying to help them achieve their goal think and back it, to when you were super frustrated what's that you don't have to tell the exact stuff that happened with the exact kid and all that stuff but yeah. think of a time when you were like super super frustrated yeah, and your yeah. and your thoughts were wrong at the time, and you had to recalculate. Yeah, for sure. And 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 tell us I mean, about it. I mean, I let me let me pick one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, because <laughs> there there were there were multiple times when you know I just felt like my kids, you know, unless I was on them, you know, I I would come home and say, hey, you know what did you do today and find out that they didn't do the things that they were supposed to do to train. And it, it might not be their practice because they had to go to practice. It might be that we're two days from a big tournament and they haven't, they're not eating right. They're not hydrating, right. They're not doing the things that I know two days from now are going to impact their performance. And they know because We've talked about it. My kids had cramping issues, so that was a big, a big deal. And it would just be like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna travel to another city, and we've done all these things, and I'm spending all this money, and and you know, you're not, you're not drinking what you need to drink a day and a half before to make sure that you're ready, and it 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 would be frustrating. So, uh, you know, I. <laughs> And, and, and I, I say, you know, there were times that I had to apologize, go back to my kids and apologize (laughs) and say, I didn't handle this right. And, you know, there's a lesson in that too, not just for me, but for them. Uh, There's a lesson in all of that. So fortunately I had my wife, um, you know, was really good at checking me and saying, Hey, hon, you know, you need to, you need to check this. And uh, sometimes I didn't want to hear that, but, uh, but, but I usually would listen. Um, So now that didn't mean that that didn't mean that I just let my kids off the hook and said, "Ah, whatever you want to do, you want to do dad's doing all this to help you and you can do whatever. I mean, we, we would have conversations and I talk about some of those things in the book that we would do to, to help them get to see that in life, when you set a goal that there are certain things that you have to do to achieve this goal. And by the way, I'm talking about 16, 17 years old. I'm not talking about an eight year old. Okay. Great Um, point. Great point. Yeah. So, um, so those are, those are the places where you have an opportunity to teach your kid about life. And over time, if they continued not to, not to want to pursue it, then, Hey, that, as Brad just said, that kind of tells me their heart's not in it. Their passion's not in it. I need to, I need to just let them have fun. Uh, But it may mean that we need to stop going to so many tournaments and we need to stop doing some of this and and let them just be a kid and and enjoy other stuff. And, and that happens all the time. We have, we have 60 million kids in this country that are playing youth sports and only 8 million that play a high school sport. So a ton of kids don't continue to pursue sports as they get older, they get interested in girls or guys and they get interested in 
just a whole plethora of other things. And that's, that's okay. Yeah. So it sounds like with your 15, 16 year old, it was a conversation about vision. Yeah. And then in order to get there, here's the different steps. Yeah. Absolutely. Dad, whether it was your plan or their plan or combination, but yep, this is the plan. Yeah. What, what I've come to learn is that, you know, if, if, if you're a sports fan, you know who Tim Tebow is. And so I'm going to use Tim as an example. Uh, Tim had this, Tim had this desire and this grit from, you know, from a super young age, you can read his books, you know, he's doing a thousand push-ups and a thousand sit-ups and he's, he's working his tail off as a young kid, you know, parents read that and then they look at their kids and go, well, my kid's not doing that. Yeah. Well, most kids aren't doing that. That is not the norm. <laughs> And, uh, and so we, we don't need to hold those people up as the benchmark, uh, that we judge our kids based off of. Now that may be what it takes to be a pro athlete, but as Brad, as Brad said, you know, to be a pro athlete, it's less than 1%. So, you know, let's just be real. Most of our kids aren't going to make money being an athlete. Uh, yeah, even in yeah. college, most of them aren't going to make money being an athlete. So we, we just need to have a, you know, a, a, a sane perspective about the realities and make sure this journey is fun and make sure this journey is one of growth. And, uh, and yeah, we want to give our kids all the opportunities we can, but, you know, we just have to have perspective. So I love your point about uh, your wife. So guys, <laughs> our wives see things in a different way than we see things. And oftentimes when they give you the look, when they give you a little elbow bump, kick you underneath the table, send you a text. <laughs> Listen, pay That's attention. Right. That that could be God saying, Hey, <laughs> open your eyes a bit. Yeah. Uh, so many stories in the Bible about wives being involved and opening mm -hmm. guys eyes. Um, and then you may go to your wife and say, Hey, help me through this one. You know, here's the scenario. Here's, here's my inputs. Here's my judgment. You know, let's keep this between us, but what do you think? You know, yeah. Am I on the right path? Is it, is it me? Is it my passions? Is it my kids? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do you think God wants us to do in this mix? You know, what's our long-term vision and, you know, and she'll be like, Oh, you're an idiot. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Straighten me out. Times. Give me some questions, but, <laughs> yeah. but our wives can be fantastic in that way. Cause they, they do, they see things in a whole different way and they know you better than anybody. So no doubt. And so yeah, I, I thought that's a, a sage right there. So guys that missed that, like so, so good. Um, you were talking about how um, different kids are, have different talent levels and stuff. And to, to drive that one home, I think a lot of times it's the kid that uh, the kids that want to do the thousand pushups and the thousand set up, it, it's them where when we've got the kid that isn't into all that and we try to push them and drive them into it, or we see the other kid, like you mentioned, well, if Tim's doing that, so real life example, one of the guys, uh, his daughter was on the softball team, fantastic guy, fantastic daughter, good work ethic. She's throwing hundred balls a day on her own, you know, waking up in the morning. And one day we're at, uh, me and this outdoor workout group called F3, we're uh, out there 530 in the morning. And I'll be darned if this girl and her dad aren't on the soccer field mm. right next to it. And I'm like, what in the heck? So we do our whole thing, our workout. They're still working. Mm. We're over there drinking coffee and hanging out. And they finally finish, you know, half hour after we're done. And I'm like, hey, man. He's like, hey, good to see you. You know, how are you? I'm like, I had a question. Like, how did you get your daughter to wake up and you drug her down here? And then he goes, I didn't do that. I go, well, how, what happened? He goes, oh no, every Saturday she wakes me up That's and brings cool. me to the field. He goes, if you watched, I was doing my own workout and stuff while she's doing ball work. And that was her two hours of practice that she designed. And she, and I'm like, she's eight. <laughs> He's like, yeah, she wants to dominate in her two sports, soccer and softball. I was like, holy cow. I'm like, And then the the comparison thinking, oh my gosh, my daughter's not doing that. Yeah. We got to step it up. <laughs> That's what we think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And turns out that wasn't the answer for my family. 
it's a mar it's a marathon. It is not a sprint. It, it, and again, I, I think that uh, that's great if that that kid was had that that type of drive. But um, eight years old, that uh, that sounds pretty pretty tough. But um, yeah, I, I think it's. But it's just if you know the key is getting them to keep playing that sport. You know that that's the main thing that I realized is I had a, my younger son was very driven, um, loved all sports, and my my goal was, and I didn't, I didn't do a great job always. My goal was like, you know, I, I can't, if he burns out, it's on me because God wired him in a way to love sports. And, and if he burns out, then I did something wrong because he, he, he shouldn't be burned. He shouldn't be burned out. But the, but the culture we're in right now is it, it really is um, it's set up to burn out kids. And a lot of these kids are burning out. And um, it, it, if you, you know, like Britt said, there's so many that don't ever even get to play. Some of the best athletes didn't even, don't even get to play high school sports because they they are overuse injuries or they're or they're mentally burned out or they're dealing with other things. And so, as a parent, as a Christian parent, like there's a standard there that I mean, especially you know, to make your high school softball team, you have to be honest with your child. There's a standard that they're going to have to be at to make that team. And, you know, we can't change that standard. That's you know, that's just fair. That's the way it is. And so how can we help you get to that place in the healthiest way possible? You know, if that's, if that's truly your goal, but uh, you know, when we're talking healthy, what are a couple things there? Um, I would say keeping it in perspective, you know, it's not, it's one of the things as a child, you know, a child, it should not, their, their entire week should not be taken up with sports, you know, or, or at least organized sports. Um, you know, my kid just had so much more fun going out in the front yard and playing tackle football with his buddies or, you know, playing playing pickup basketball or pickup soccer in the neighborhood. And they'd go for hours and hours and absolutely just come back, you know, with torn clothes and sweaty and just had a blast. And it was great for him, you know. Um, so I would say, but also like, you know, just letting them have be a kid for as much as, as long as possible. When they get to high school and I told our our family that when my son got to ninth grade, it's like, look, if things are going to change, I mean, he, we're going to miss out on some things the next four years. You know, we're going to miss out because he has a commitment to his team in high school that he's going to have to keep if he wants to say so. But before that, um, you know, really don't, don't miss out on, don't let them miss out on being a kid, going to the pool, you know, having family vacations. The other thing is just playing a lot of different sports too, as many different sports as they can. So, I mean, it's just, it's crazy how so many of our kids in high school here at Providence, um, the sport that they grew up training so much for is not the sport they ended up playing in high school. Oh, wow. So girls, you know, they, um, a lot of those, like Britt talked about the gymnasts and things like that. A lot of times they burn out of that at 12 years old, but then they choose volleyball or soccer and become great volleyball and soccer players because it just seems more fun to them than gymnastics was. Yeah. So many girls and good, since I'm right in that range, they all just retired. I'm like, yeah. Hey, what's up with gymnastics? Ah, coach. Yeah, I'm retired. It's a tough sport. Like you're 11. Tough sport. It's just tough. <laughs> like, well, you know, I'm not on the Olympic track and I don't want to go to college and do this. And yeah. the triple flip thing scared the heck out of me and I ain't doing it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dan, you talk, you, you asked me about being healthy and gymnastics is yeah. a good segue into that because there's, there's mental health and then there's physical health and, and both mm. of them are pretty important, you know, and, and in our society today, of course, mental health with kids is just, it is such a, or let me say this, mental unhealth is becoming, you know, epidemic. And, um, and you know, we have to be careful as parents of the pressure, you know, to sports transitions from being a place of, of rest and a place of fun and a place of mental recovery to being one more thing that we put on our kids' plates that's pressure cooked. And, uh, and that's probably, if you look over a couple of generations, you know, that's probably the biggest pressure. I mean, the biggest change in sports, we, we had a, we had a doctor, um, a, a mental coach and a, and a wellness doctor on uh, who has a lot of pro athletes, but he also has kids of his own and talks about, talks about the the mental benefits of what sports used to be uh, and and we're stripping those things away we as parents who control the leagues and sports has become a business and all that kind of stuff we're stripping those elements away 
Uh, and, and so we, we just have to be really careful that we allow our kids to have fun with sports and not get so, you know, tied into, you know, my kids falling behind. Cause if you, you know, if all you think about, and look, I've been there, if all you think about is your kids falling behind, then really what really the root of that is we're thinking more about where we hope our kids wind up in the future than, than their health right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so that, I think that whole aspect is really important. And then the physical health too, as Brad just mentioned, you know, just physical injuries. We, we had a, we had a doctor on about a month ago, who's a world renowned specialist. Um, it speaks all over the world on the topic of specialization and, you know, any, any approaches it from reality. I mean, you know, you do at some point in most sports today and you get into high school, mm -hmm. if you play at the highest level, you're going to have to specialize. But but he has tons of research on the benefits of specialization and the risk, the physical risk of specialization, especially at an early age. It's a it's a it's a great episode with just lots of information for parents and uh, and we just have to be careful because specialization at a young age, I mean, we're seeing tons of tons of injuries and with girls in soccer and blowing knees out in high school uh, and you know in arm injuries in baseball. I mean, that's not new news. It's you know, it's been going on for some time. but all those things, you know, we didn't hear about a lot of that when we were kids. It was it was an exception, not the rule. And it's becoming way more prevalent today because of how we approach sports. Yeah, yeah, Mike Matheny said his most popular question people ask of him about their kids is, how do we get them to the pros? And mm -hmm. he's, it's kind of two things. What's your kid willing to do that other kids aren't willing to do? Yeah. And maybe more importantly, what is your kid willing not to do yeah. that other kids will? And so oftentimes you see drugs or uh, video games or other things that pull them away from or put them behind bars, you know, so uh, dangerous, dangerous stuff, um, you know, or, or even the major leagues, you know, you get a rookie, he gets up and he's like, oh, cool, the party lifestyle. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden he ain't around no more. You know, he, he got a cup of cup of coffee and that's, that's the end of his career. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think the other thing too, and we we've seen this as we've, we talked to all these pro athletes and, and, you know, and, Francoeur, our, our co-host and partner, you know, is that pro athlete. And mo many of them were elite athletes from the time they were six. They were in the upper 1% of athletes. Now, they also had to work hard and they had to, they had to sacrifice things and all that. But, you know, I mean, I'll take myself, for example. I was a pretty good athlete, but I was not you know, I could have worked as hard as I wanted to work, probably wasn't going to be a pro. <laughs> you know, we have to, we have to, you know, we have to look at our kids honestly and, uh, and, and say it's some, at some point we have to be honest with ourselves and say, I can drive them, you know, forever, but they still might not, you know, have it in them to become a pro. So <laughs> let's throttle back a little bit and let them enjoy this. So I'm about five foot six guys. My youngest daughter right. says, dad, when you were my age, what did you want to be when you grew up? And I was like, well, I wanted to be the point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah. I go, well, hold on. I was a couple of years older than you now, but yes. She goes, you wanted to play basketball? <laughs> I go, yeah. in the pros. She goes in point guard. I go, well, yeah, I knew I was going to be short. <laughs> well, you're realistic. You at least you uh, have a realistic goal there. Goes, you know? Well, dad, that's never that was uh, I said I know now, but back then that was that was what I was shooting for, and uh, yeah, there was a whole lot of reasons why that one didn't come true. <laughs> but yeah, she was blown away that that was my big dream back then. Yeah, there aren't many Muggsy Bogues out yeah. there. No, no, not at all. It's funny. I saw Muggsy. I was like, that was never going to be me. Yeah. <laughs> but I rooted for him, man. Him and Spud Webb, the greatest. Yeah, yeah, right, right. right. So Brad, you're being in the Christian high school. Um, what are, what do you see there that kids, um, that you warn things, kids away from, or here's the hard and fast or cut from the team or, um, 
or maybe things that parents should do or help or guide. But in that space these days, when we were younger, they didn't have the phones. They didn't have the videos. They didn't have the social media where all eyes are on them. Um, I know there's some local kids and they took a picture with a beer. They didn't have a beer, but in the picture, there was mm -hmm. another kid with a beer and they're like, you're in trouble. We know he's not a sports kid. Mm -hmm. So he's not in trouble, but you guys are. We didn't do anything. Ah. <laughs> well, I think, um, you know, the difference I think between when we were in high school and the kids in high school now, I mean, they're gosh, I'm talking about just sports wise. There's a ton of differences with social yeah. media that the social media thing is a whole nother animal. Uh, the pressure, it, it, it adds just 10 times more pressure than there already was. But um, I think there's a lot more me focus nowadays than there is kind of a we focus when we were in high school, you know, the dream was to play for your high school team and to help your high school team, you know, win a championship or region championship. Yeah, or state yeah. championship. And it was, especially in the, in, in the South, I mean, just, you know, it was just such a, an honor to play in your small towns, high school football team or baseball team. Now it seems like the kids come in with that goal being to, to play in college first. And when they kind of hit a lot of times it's by their junior year, they kind of hit the realization that maybe that's not either. They, they realize they're not good enough or they realize, you know, I, I think I may, when I get to college, they kind of get a real realistic view of what it, a college athlete's life is like. And they kind of say, Hey, I, I'm not sure if that's for me. And so then you kind of have to reset their goals and let them understand that, look, it's still about glorifying God with doing everything the best you can do. And if your athletic career ends here in high school, you know, you still want to try to do it as well as you can, even though you have no desire to play in college. Now it's, it's to, you know, what kind of, can you be the best teammate you can be? Can you be a best leader you can be and take, like, I think Brett said, take the, um, the habits and take the great things you get from sports and man, milk them for all it's worth these, this last year and a half you have in high school. And then, you know, use it to jumpstart your next phase of life, whether it's college or a job, you know, use those skills, use those habits that you've created. And so really it's kind of resetting um, the mindset of, of a lot of our kids who came in going, Oh gosh, I want to play college baseball. I want to play college football. And then when they realize, gosh, that's not my goal anymore. Hey, you, it doesn't mean you quit. You know, it means you still, you still want to be with your friends. You still want to have that great camaraderie that you'll, you may never get again, you know? And so it, that's, that's really kind of what's different. I've seen that in these days than what, when we were kids, because a lot of us, we dreamed of it, but it really, it was kind of like, just my goals are just to make, you know, my high school basketball team, it, it, you know, I, I did have big dreams when I was younger, but it was just, uh, it was more, I think we had more perspective maybe, you know, and um, so uh, it, it, and the social media thing is, is absolutely, it, it just, it just adds so much pressure in so many different aspects of a teenager's life. And it's just so unhealthy in so, so many ways. And, and it's, but it's, it's, we're not going to, we're not going to do away with it. You know, we, we're just, we're going to have to try to affect it. In, in, in the best way possible, you know? Yeah. So I think it's important as we already talked about being connected with our children, but also having those conversations. And even though it might not be something that they're excited about helping them towards that longer term vision and let, letting them know that you're there to support them and walk with them through these things and to keep that open dialogue uh, where maybe they make a mistake or in the future, they might make a mistake, allowing them to know that, we can talk about the mistake as opposed to crushing them and, you know, hardcore discipline and, you know, you're off the sports team cause you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, leading with love as opposed to uh, leading with a stick. Yeah, definitely. You've got five. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. So you've got five pillars, uh, vision, grit, skill, belief, character, those are things that really build an athlete. And I was like, yep, like those are good ones. Those are good ones. You want to expand on any of those? Yeah, I, we came up with that because, you know, when we, when we came up with the brand pure athlete, we chose the word pure, not, not the word best athlete. We chose the word pure to represent the best version of an athlete. How do you strive to be the best version of an athlete uh, both, you know, in sports and in life. And, um, uh, and we, we feel like in my experience, you know, um, and this is changing even today, but in my experience, 
parents were spending tons of time and money, you know, throwing it at the skill piece of that. And the skill piece is real. You have to have skill, uh, but skill is not the only thing that's going to make, you know, it's going to help somebody uh, achieve what they need to achieve. Um, and so, you know, you, you've got to start with, you know, you've got to start, and this is true in all of life. You, you need vision for where is it, what's the destination you're trying to get to. So that's that whole piece of vision, learning how to set goals, long-term goals, short-term goals, how to track goals, those types of things. Uh, if you want to achieve high level in anything, you have to be goal oriented. So, so that was an element. Grit is certainly an element and grit is just something we define as, is perseverance, uh, that has to be fueled by passion. So, uh, gr grit, perseverance is not fueled by passion is going to fail. Eventually it's going to fail. Uh, but work ethic and all those kinds of things are, you know, if you're going to achieve high things in any part of life, you have to have grit, skill piece we've already talked about. And then belief is just the whole mental side of sports. And a lot of people talk about how important the mental side of sports is, uh, that it's just as important as the physical. I actually believe that. Uh, but all those things to us kind of roll up into if your mental game is right, then when you step on the court or the field or in the pool, you have belief and belief is fuel. Um, and you have to have belief to achieve to achieve big things. Uh, and then the last thing, I'm going to be honest with you, you can be a great athlete without character. Yes. Uh, we, we see plenty of examples of that, but we, we decided that you can't be a pure athlete without character. Mm -hmm. uh, and character plays out in many things from a, from a really direct sports thing. Uh, being a good teammate, knowing what it means to be a good teammate, uh, learning how to lead, uh, and leadership really is influence. How do you, you don't have to have a position to lead. You can, you can, you can be an influencer, uh, among your peers, among your competitors. How do you have great sportsmanship? Sportsmanship displays character. Um, uh, so there's all kind of aspects, uh, to character and integrity and, those types of things that we wanted to build into this equation that we call, you know, the pure athlete. Yeah. We, we, you know, we pose a lot of, or we, we talk about a lot of the problems in youth sports and we really just wanted to start offering some solutions to this. And, you know, and Britt and I, yes, as dads, we, we got some wisdom from all our mistakes, but that's kind of like we, that's why we have the athletes on there uh, for them to tell their stories. And so through their stories, uh, and along with kind of us putting together this framework of the pillars, we wanted to help start offering some solutions that can that can possibly affect this youth sports culture right now. And Britt wrote the book. I mean, he's he's the he's the, he's the genius behind the book. But we just kind of copied the the pillars no, into our bigger platform. <laughs> so when I hear pure athlete, it actually makes me think about uh, something a guy named Paul wrote in Philippians four eight. Uh, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And I'm like, I, I love, love that, that word, pure, you know, yeah. that combination, pure athlete. Yeah. Humble yeah. leader is another word. It's like right. sometimes the leadership, you know, two sides of the coin. Yeah dictator and demanding and then there's a humble leader like jesus and when we can think about things through a filter such as philippians 4 8 we tend to come with better answers yeah definitely definitely yeah boy and dan you just you touched on something i, I gotta pick up on because we, we we talk about this a lot but in our social media culture you know the the humility is being lost in sports and uh, and ki what kids see today on Sports Center or on clips on Instagram, you know, it's not enough to beat somebody at the game. You've got to put them down. You've got to stand over them and taunt them. You got to, you know, you got to talk trash. You got to do all those types of things. And we as parents, that's our responsibility. 
It's our responsibility to be counter to that culture and to teach our kids, no, you win with humility and you lose with humility and, and to paint a picture of what that looks like for your kids. And, and we're seeing, you know, that's been going on in the pros for a long time. It's happening and Brad can attest to it. It's happening at high school level. And now it's starting to happen at youth sports level too, that, that they're just following what they're watching. And, and we as parents have got to speak into that. Yeah, it's actually worse at the, the younger you get, the worse it's getting. If you go to a ball field uh, in terms of parent behavior as well, like the younger the, the, the younger age games seem to have more issues than the older age games. As the parents age with their kids in high school, they get a little, have more perspective and a little better uh, take on things. But gosh, you go watch a, a travel baseball game at 11 you know, club soccer or uh, basketball it is it's crazy how they're mimicking the behavior of the pro athletes and it's not a good behavior and it's it is it's something that, that we just it's really really disheartening to see and that's what we're trying to to really help help solve that problem what are some things um i guess tv social media uh youtube shorts real whatever the kids are checking out these days um is there something that you hear, and maybe even from the high school side, that you hear that you see a kid just change direction and like, ooh, and there may be a common thread that you see? Um, you talking about in a good way or a bad way? Either way. Um, I mean, you know, we're thankfully that, you know, our school is, is, is a Christian school and, and these kids are being inundated, hopefully with gospel and and uh, wisdom that comes from that. But I mean, we say that we're not we used to, people used to think they could protect these kids. Uh, you really can't protect the kids anymore because of social media. You have to prepare them for the world. You have mm. to prepare them for, for a world that's against them uh, and against what Jesus teaches and what Jesus is all about. And so, um, I mean, it's, we're not, you know, we probably don't get it through a fire hose. Uh, we get it through a drop, uh, you know, dropper or whatever, so to speak. But our kids now, I mean, we have to fight social media. We have to fight YouTube. We have to fight that every day, just like parents do. You're, you're not going to, you're not going to protect your kids from the world anymore. It's just, it's just created in a way now that they're inundated with, with bad stuff. And so you have to just keep pouring into their hearts, you know, pouring in the good and, and that the fights that bad. And, and then hopefully uh, if they, if they are believers, the Holy spirit will, will give them that discernment and give them that, that lens to look at this stuff through. But, um, we see it, you know, we see it here. And again, it may be not as bad as some of the other places see it, but we still see it here because, um, it's, it's just the world we live in now, you know? And so you just, you try to, you have to fight it. You have to fight it as a parent. You have to fight it as a coach. Uh, you have to fight it as a teacher. Um, you know, that's, and, but that's also what God's called us to do as well, you know, is, is to do that. So, so it sounds like, uh, as we parent, as we lead, as we connect, and guide is bringing to our kids. Hey, this is what's coming. We've got, a, we've got a battle that we're going to fight the rest of our lives, mm -hmm. the ways of the world and the ways of the Lord. Here's the ways of the Lord. And if it doesn't kind of fit the Philippians four, eight filter, probably the ways of the world. Yeah. 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 You're either pouring yeah. in. My wife always says you're either pouring in good or pouring in bad. There's not a lot of gray area. And uh, we just got to try to pour as much good as we can to into them. What about? Well, I, I oh, think go ahead. There's an old adage um, that as parents, you know, we our job is to prepare them for the road, not prepare the road for them. And I think, oh, you know, I love that today we are we we as parents are oftentimes spending way too much time preparing the road for them trying to move everything out of the way and make it easy for our kids. And as Brad said, I mean, you, you can't, you, you can't, you can't escape the world. We live in the world. We're called to live in the world. We're called to be salt and light in the world. Um, and, and so, you know, how do we, how do we speak into that for our kids and, and teach them how to, how to live in the world effectively and, uh, and to discern what they need to discern. And, uh, and, and that look, that's, I mean, 
that's that's a journey of life for all of us and kids you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna struggle with things and and that's you know but we're we're trying to raise kids this is a really good uh, it reminds me of a point um i talked to a college tennis coach one day and uh and he had a son playing in the tournament and my sons were playing as well and he talked about as a college tennis coach d1 college tennis coach he said you know my my job is to raise young a young man not to raise a young tennis player mm-hmm. and, and that stuck with me and that applies to all sports and and getting back to the the sports part of this equation we as parents have to realize that our job is to raise is to raise our kids to be you know, effective, effective and well-adjusted adults that can live effectively in this world and and can love, you know, can love Jesus and, you know, which is their decision, but, you know, but to raise them up in the right ways. And, uh, and sports can be a part of that, but sports should be a part of that, not the other way around. Yeah. So we just, we just, it's so easy to get that out of balance and, and all of this. And I, I can tell you, cause Brad and I have, we've talked about this so much uh, before we ever got into this pure athlete business. We had a lot of lunches just talking about our journeys and, and encouraging each other and, you know, asking for advice and wisdom and counseling and, and Hey, you parents out there, you need to do that. You need somebody that you can say, man, I screwed up bad today with my kid relative to this sport, but all of that and all these principles and everything, uh, the most important thing is prayer. (laughs) And I've spent a lot of time on, you know, on my knees uh, about sports, you know, asking, asking the Lord to help me as a dad, you know, filter out this stuff that was inside me. Like, why do I care so much about this? I need to care more about this. And, um, and so that, I think that's common to many of us as men and, uh, and we need our, our, our wives praying for us and, and we need to pray and be on our knees and humble ourselves, uh, uh, about our kids' sports. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. When we get triggered through kids' sports, often it's us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The external thing happens, but then we... Why did that parent say that to me? Yep. Why did they say it? And it's like, examine, take a look. What are you feeling? Where's it coming from? Um, had a parent loudly professing that uh, she's upset that I don't yell, like yell, yell at the players during the games. Like, they're walking up to bat and I'm not yelling at them or they step out of the box and I'm not, don't swing at that freaking high strike. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> he don't do that. And my wife says, do you hear that? I said, yeah. She says, yeah. why don't you do that? And I said, well, do I want them to succeed or fail? I'm like, if I want them to fail, I'll do that. Right. <laughs> I'm like, they don't need more noise in their head right now. I'm like, I prefer y'all. And I ask y'all in the stands and just clap. Like, yeah. that's it. That's the only noise I really want to hear is a clap. Yep. outside of that i'll i'll work with the players i'll work with the the umpires you know and we'll do the umpire thing discreetly and not make a scene but uh you know we're just not going to yell at umps anybody like there's no reason for it uh, you know and especially with uh, the lack of umpires there are today and the ones that are doing it are doing it for you know the right reasons for the most part you know every once in a while there's an egotistical one and yeah. we talked a bit about pride but yeah some of them are prideful and Show, yeah. You know, you can see it in the major leagues. Uh, go watch Angel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Angel Hernandez, he's a show. Yes, he is. <laughs> so, so with that, Angel Hernandez, if you're listening, take a look at Philippians 2, 3 through 4. <laughs> Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. Guys, man, you have some fantastic, unbelievable guests. You've got great background. Uh, what a wonderful book you've put together, uh, Britt. Have you got any parting advice or anything for the guys? And then after that, a follow-up of, can you throw a challenge out for guys as they're leading their children, whether it's in sports or guiding them in life? 
uh, of something they can do this week between this week and next week. Brad, you want to go first? Oh, wow. Um, I would just say, um, take time, uh, take, take a step back and enjoy the journey as a parent and enjoy the ride. It, it's, it don't take it so seriously because it's going to go by really, really fast and, uh, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss those times driving your kid to the ballpark and, and, uh, the, the drive, the, you know, the drives back from the ballpark, hopefully they're good, but enjoy the ride and then take time, be intentional about, um, you know, finding the good things that your, that your child has done in that day in sports. We, you know, we, we, we quickly want to say, you know, kind of coach them. And even if it's done in the right spirit, we want to coach them, but just, um, you know, I, I really kind of watching my kid play baseball and, I, and just, you know, the first thing I try to tell them is, you know, Brady, I just had a great time watching you play today. You know, it was just a blast watching you pray to play and whether or not he struck out, you know, three times or hit a couple homers. It just, it was a blast watching you play hard. And so just try to find those moments to compliment your kid and find the good things they did. Um, they're going to remember those, those comments there, you know, much more than they're going to remember the coaching comments. Mm, yeah, that's great. There's a girl, she struck out looking. She came walking to the dugout crying, just lost it. She's a girl emotions. Okay. I said, Hey, sweetie, um, we're up 15 to two. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh three more outs. There's a run limit. Like we've got this game one. Can I ask you why you're crying? She goes, yeah, my dad's going to yell at me. Cause I struck mm. out looking, I didn't get the bat off my shoulder. Mm. I said, well, it's 15 to two. We're going to win this one and we'll, we'll live to fight another day. Put a smile on your face. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> so yeah i hear that like that sounds a whole lot different I had a great time watching you today sweetie yeah son had a i'm proud of you I had a great time watching your your energy your effort um just just love love being there with you and experiencing this with you um and you know and the kids looking in the stands to see their dad they don't look to mom they're looking to dad dad's mm -hmm. in the stands that's the one that matters and dads you can influence your kid on the field by your criticism so if you're criticizing your kid all the time when they're in the batter's box when they're on the field when they're in their position when they're at the free throw line and they're thinking oh man dad's here man he's gonna he's gonna freak out on me if i don't shoot 75 percent free throws if I don't take my bat off the shoulder. So they're thinking about the negative thing that's going to happen if they do the negative thing. So when you're focused on the negative thing, what do you do? Negative thing. A negative thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Matheny spoke out. Lloyd McClendon's like, you sissy Christians, you know, don't do your Bible study in here. And Lloyd and uh, Mike wanted to punch Lloyd. And instead he says, God, help me out because the words and the actions aren't yours. Mm -hmm. Give me something. And he exhaled and the words that came out of her mouth were, Hey, if you see any of that sissy Christian stuff, Lloyd, uh, let me know. I don't know anything about sissy Christian. What I know is I've got the most powerful force in the world working for me and through me yeah. and my guys in my club all should be exhibiting, you know, courage, uh, effort, <laughs> vision, grit, skill, belief, character. Like mm -hmm. we're here for the glory of God and, God's power is flowing through us. So when we're in that clutch moment, we know God's with us and we've got that force with us. Now that's a whole lot different thinking than, oh man, my dad's going to criticize me. Yeah, totally, totally. And then if your dad's going to criticize you, of course, what's God going to do? It, he, he's not, but our earthly way of thinking is our earthly dad's this way. So God's this way too. So that'll goof that whole thing up for your kids down the road. Um, I wasn't expecting to get like ah, right at the last second, but man, that's a big one, big one, big one. So, and, and same thing when you're in the car ride home, the criticism, like just stay away from it. Like that's the, the worst five minutes of a kid's week, walking to the car or the car ride home, like in that, uh Oh, what's dad going to say? Yep. Yep. Hey, let's go get ice cream. <laughs> As opposed to all the criticism, like the coaching and all that stuff can come through the coach or days later or whatever, but not, not in the heat of the moment. So <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> Have you got a challenge for the guys? Uh, 
I would, I would say this, um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you two and one, yes. one is going to be very specific and one's going to be a little broader and this very specific one you just touched on and it's, and it's the car ride home. Uh, you know, there was a study done of, of, of college athletes a number of years ago, and they were asked the question, what's your worst memory of youth sports? Oof. Overwhelmingly, the answer was the car ride home with my parents. And, um, and I've actually got a chapter in my book called the car ride home. And it, and, you know, and it's the one chapter that like anybody who reads my book comes and says, Oh my gosh, that hit me right between the eyes. Cause wow. That study hit me right between the eyes. And, and so you, you're right on the mark, Dan, you know, Hey, it, it's fine to, it's, it's fine to break down the game with your kids at some point. Don't do it on the car ride home. Let your kid decompress on the car ride home. Talk about anything else. As Brad said, talk about, man, it's so fun to watch you play. I had, I loved it. Uh, talk about where we're going to go eat. Talk about ice cream. Talk about whatever. Give it 24 hours before you break down the game. Just let your kids enjoy that. Don't let them be one of those statistics that says my worst memory was the car ride home with my parents. So that that would be a very specific challenge I would give folks. Uh, the, the broader challenge, and this just comes from somebody who's done, uh, finished, and I miss it, uh, is that realize that the return on investment, you know, is not going to be financial for 99% of us as parents. The return on investment is going to be relational and it's going to be either a positive return or it's going to be a negative return. So I just challenge parents to, you know, as a parent, do everything you can within reason to help your kids pursue and achieve their dreams but recognize that it's going to end at some point for most of them, it's going to end, you know, before high school, for some of them, it's going to end at the end of high school, you know, when it's over, what's your relationship going to be with your kids and, and do everything you can to make sure it's better because of sports and not worse because of sports. That, that would be my big challenge. Mm, that's a great one. Guys, you may involve your wife in that one. Mm, for sure. Like think through that one and then, yeah, Hey honey, this group of guys challenged me to whatever. And what do you, th I can get my wife's input a little bit better if I could tell her I'm part of this group of guys and what we were talking about was whatever. And you got any input on that? This is what I was thinking or whatever, but, uh, that one's a good one. So wherever you are, whatever season you're in, uh, think about the next season, think about 10, 20 years from now and how you're filtering uh -huh. and, and where you're tracking. Brad looks like you had something. Oh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Brad, <laughs> Brad says it better than me always. So <laughs> there you go. I was like you're over there just cracking up as we were talking. So, oh, well, thank you guys so, so much. Where can, uh, where can guys connect with you? What's, uh, I know you've got the book out there and website. So go ahead and, and tell guys how to connect with and uh, what's the best way we can help you all out to grow your message. Yeah, we do have a website and it's pureathleteinc.com. And our contents on our website, our podcast, which we're, you know, we're about 50 episodes in and, um, you know, you can find it on Apple, on Spotify, and it's the Pure Athlete podcast. And it's not the purple one. It's the pink one. <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the first one you'll find, uh, but it's, uh, you know, you right, can, it's the blue one. I said pink one. It's blue one. It's blue one. Blue one. Yeah, blue one. <laughs> um, look for, look but, for ugly uh, faces and uh, Jeff Rancor's handsome face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're we're also on Instagram and we post we post little thirty second clips from many of our athletes. Uh, you know, from all sports, guys, gals, and a lot of really cool challenges and insights. We post one every, just about every day. Uh, and again, that's Pure Athlete Inc. Um, in, on Instagram, and we're on we're on X or Twitter, <laughs> those as well. So uh, anyway, we we Dan, we we love what you're doing here, and uh, thanks for thanks for you know the challenge and and what you're delivering to your audience, and thanks for having us on. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, my pleasure. Uh, yeah, you've had Dabo Sweeney, Chipper Jones. Uh, Carson Wentz, 
and I, it seems like, and I don't know this to be true, but it seems like all your guests are all Christians. They're not. Uh, I would say they're not. Many, many, a high percentage are, but we we kind of decided early on that you know we wanted to hear people's stories, and um, and mm. you know, and, and so that we weren't going to put a, a a litmus test and yeah. say we're only going to have believers on. But many of our many of our folks are, and and faith is a huge part of their story. Dan Orlovsky was yes. Up- and Dan talked all about the we moment. we put him inside our Facebook community when he made that comment when he prayed. Yeah. yeah. In fact, on our episode with him, we ask about that moment and he takes us behind the scenes. And I mean, that was not just spontaneous. He he really thought and prayed and talked to his bosses about whether you know he was going to do that or not. And uh so it's a really cool story. Uh, to listen to uh, Dan share and Dan's just a, he's just a great guy. Uh, but, uh, but you, you mentioned some great guests we have. I, I do want to throw in, you know, a few that are female because we got Carly <laughs> Boyd from soccer. We've got Misty May trainer, one of the greatest volleyball players who's ever played uh, and, and a number of others as well. Julie Fowdy, Julie Fowdy yeah. was on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Julie was on. Yeah. Yeah. Julie was on. Yeah. Yeah, we I was a softball girl. We had uh, Jessica Mendoza on, who's one of the one of the probably top three or four softball players of all time, and she was great. So, uh, so thanks for thanks for sharing that with our audience, with your audience, and uh, we we appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, my pleasure. Appreciate you guys coming on, and uh, look forward to continuing the relationship with you guys. Thank you so much for what you do, and it's it's desperately needed in a world where the ways of the world have taken over our sport, sports culture. Yep. Yep. Thank you so much, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it's a lot it. Of fun. God bless you guys, and God bless you guys who listen. Look forward to you guys catching us next week.